Welcome to Raychem's series of training videotapes from the Electrical Products Division. This tape will show a laboratory installation of heat shrinkable splices for 15 kV single conductor shielded power cable, with an additional segment demonstrating the splicing procedures for 15 kV, three conductor shielded, and three conductor armored cable. Before starting the splicing procedures, be sure to read and follow the written instructions included with each Raychem splice kit. Along with the required cable preparation tools, you will need a clean burning propane gas torch. The recommended torches are Raychem's FH2609, which is no longer available, but you may still be using. the FH2629, or the FH2616A1. Remember that when using a gas torch, check all the connections for leaks before igniting. And be sure to follow the safety instructions designated by your own organization. To minimize any effects of fumes from a gas torch in a confined workspace, always provide good ventilation. When installing electrical accessories, follow the applicable safety requirements and written installation instructions. This product is covered by a materials safety data sheet. Failure to follow these warnings could cause oxygen depletion, fire, explosion, or electrical hazard resulting in serious or fatal injuries. This demonstration is not intended to represent field installation conditions or your specific safety procedures. The first cable we will splice is the 15 kV single conductor cable with a metallic tape shield. You should follow these same instructions for splicing lead sheath cables. Prior to sliding the nested tubes onto the cable, be sure to clean the cable surface with an oil-free solvent and a lint-free cloth for the length of the tubes. Then, after the connector is installed, remove any remaining burrs or sharp edges and clean it and the cable surface with solvent. Now cover the connector with stress relief material, commonly called SRM. Take a package of the SRM and remove one side of the protective paper. Then roll it up with the paper on the outside. This will make it easier to handle and will prevent it from sticking to itself. Start by wrapping the SRM between the connector and the insulation. As you wrap, keep the SRM stretched to half its original width and ensure that it completely fills in the gaps on both sides of the connector. When you heat shrink the first tube into place, the SRM will melt to fill in these gaps. Wrap the SRM around the connector until it is slightly larger than the outside diameter of the insulation. Finish it off by wrapping a quarter of an inch onto the insulation and tearing off any excess. 
If the connector diameter is larger than the diameter of the insulation, you will need to apply no more than two half-lapped layers of SRM over the entire connector. Be sure to fill in the gaps between the connector and the insulation with SRM, as well as overlapping the insulation by a quarter of an inch. Next, use the SRM that is diagonally cut to fill in both gaps at the edge of the semicon cutback. Lay the point of the SRM on the surface of the dielectric up against the edge of the semicon cutback and wrap until it is the same thickness as the semicon. Again, stretch it until it's about half its original width. With the last wrap, overlap it a quarter of an inch onto the insulation and a quarter of an inch onto the semicon. Now take the innermost black tube, which is the stress control tube, and center it over the connector. Then, using an appropriate torch, begin shrinking the tube. The flame should be about six to eight inches in length, and the tip should touch the surface of the tube. <laughs> 